Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and I'm here to teach you all about lettering. And this is Let's Make Art Lettering. I'm so excited this is our first time together. And if you're not familiar with what we do, we have a subscription box where we give you all the supplies and we're gonna letter every week a new project. And I'm gonna help guide you through this journey. So whether you've done this before or you haven't, come join and I want you to learn why lettering is so special and so cool. So the first thing is the supplies. Well, actually I'm gonna show you the first project that we're gonna do. Uh, oh, and if you hear mu music, hey, that's fine. Keenan might rap in the back. <laughs> no beatbox. Um, if you hear a voice in the back, that's Keenan. He's the film guy helping to guide me. But the first project that we're gonna be doing is hellos in different languages. Um, this is something that I'm really excited because of the internet. You could be watching this in any, any country, any state. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing for the first one. The supplies that we're going to be using, I'm going to be using the Tombow Dual Brush Pens. If you have other brush pens, if you have different colors, please use whatever you have. I know it can get intimidating if you don't know what to use, so I wanted to guide you and show you what I like to use. So the three that I'm using are the, this is 026, this is yellow gold, 933 is orange, and then, Keenan, what color do you think this is? Oh, you know. I already know, but I'm gonna guess. <laughs> I originally guessed coral. You did. Oh yeah, you did. did. And but it is then I coral. Said peach. I doubted myself. It looks like both. It does. Eight seven three is coral. So those are the three that I'm gonna be using. And then I'm gonna be using an eraser and a pencil. Nothing fancy. The final project is going to be on Bristol paper. So I really like this paper. It's a thicker cardstock type of paper, but it's really smooth. And it's nice because with brush pens, you are going to be, when you use them a lot, you're gonna kind of want to keep them healthy, which by doing that is you don't want to use really rough paper because it will just fray it a lot faster. That, oh, and then also there are a few handouts that I can that I created that you can get. If you have the box, they're in there, or if you don't, you can also go to our website, letsmakeart.com, and go to the lettering section, and you can download, download them there and continue on with me here. Um, that's that, is there anything else? Oh, a, where's my bowl? In my jelly beans. <laughs> Um, a bowl or a plate, this is for to help guide you with the project. Um, it's just a little tip that I found works well. So you can use any size that you have. Just have it fit in the size, within the size of your paper. Um, and then we're ready to get started. The four steps that I'm gonna be guiding you through in this video are the first one is getting to know your brush pen. Because if, if this is your first time ever using it, I wanna help guide you. The second one is connections. So I wanna show you that cursive is different than hand lettering and why, and we're gonna take it a lot slower. The third one is we're gonna lay out the project in pencil, and then the fourth one is using the brush pens. So let's get started. With everything, let me move all this. Um, the first thing that I want you to do is grab out some practice paper. I'm going to be use, it's called HP Premium Choice Laser Jet. It's just a very long name for printer. It's fancier printer paper, essentially. But I like to use this for practicing. If you use a little bit cheaper printer paper, sometimes it'll, one, fray your pen easier and it'll bleed. So that's why I suggest this. Um, use this color. So when you are looking at your tool, so the brush pen is, it has two different parts. It has a taper tip. So the tip is a lot pointier. And then at the bottom, it gets whiter. And then the other thing when you're looking at it is that it will bounce back if you put a lot of pressure on it. So you don't have to feel like you have to be gentle with these guys is because they'll just bounce back and get back to its original shape. With this, when the first time you're using it, you'll notice that you can get different size strokes depending on how hard you push. So you can see that there's a, vari a variance to the thickness of the stroke. With lettering and with the style that we're learning, which actually I want to mention, if you haven't watched, we created a beginner lettering series that goes through all of this and it goes through the supplies that I like to use and then the foundation chokes. And so that will help be an intro if you'd like to, before you start watching this. But if it's okay, we're, I'm gonna guide you through it anyways. Um, 
So what's happening with this style is if you look at the final project, you will notice that there are thin lines and there are thicker lines. And what's happening is it's thinking about when your hand is moving up and down. So when my hand is moving up, I'm creating a thin line. And when my hand is moving down, I'm creating a thick line. So the motto and thing to kind of learn is thin on the up, thick on the down. And that is, I think it's episode three of the series. So if you're wondering what that is, that will help um, refresh your memory. So thin on the up, thick on the down. So when I'm doing this is you'll notice I'm just lightly grazing the paper using the tip when I'm going up. So thin on the up, and then I'm gonna apply more pressure and use the belly of the brush. So can you see how it's pushing and smushing it? Is that's thick on the down. So the foundation stroke episode on, which is the fourth one, has, this is a PDF download that you can use and you can use this to practice. So this shows you the different strokes that will help make up your letters. So you'll see that there's a thin, or a thick and a thin. So I can do a few of them just to show you. So you'll see I'm going thick on the down, really pushing, and then I'm getting thin on the up, which actually that's a little bit more, that's the, what number? That's the fifth one. So I wanna show you this one. So thin on the up, thick on the down. This will be a good one for you to start off practicing. So thin on the up, thick on the down. You might also hear some fun noises. That is totally normal. You're not pressing too hard, because again, you'll see that my brush pen's still totally okay. So I also, so that was the first step is just getting to know your brush pen, know the capabilities. Another exercise that you can go through is challenge yourself to see how thin you can get by going up. And maybe you go all the way across the paper. And then once you start to get to the middle of the paper, you can start to apply medium pressure. So you can see I'm applying a little bit more. And then when you get to maybe the middle, you decide to go down and remember it's thick on the down and you're going to apply more pressure and see how thick you can get. Oh, like that. So that's a good exercise for you to start with. And then once you do that, there's another handout that will look like this. And I'll put this right here. Let me switch up colors. So this one is a few different words that I just wrote out so you can practice. So you'll notice that there is a darker one and then there's a little bit lighter one. I wanted to make it a little bit lighter so that you can trace over it and then I left a spot for you to do it on your own. So when I was mentioning in the beginning how, hand, how lettering is different than cursive, it's because we're taking it a lot slower. So when we learn cursive, you, were, you learned it to draw really fast or to write really fast. And this actually is a practice of slowing down and being more mindful of it, which I know is kind of opposite of, of our culture or what we're doing right now. But I want you to really take this time to be present here. So I'm gonna think what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go thin on the up and use my tip. So thin on the up, thick on the down. And then I'm gonna lift up, then I'm gonna go the next stroke. Thin on the up, thick on the down. So if you notice, the first part of the H is like this L, and then the second part is like this combo shape. So it looks like that. So it's not like that, because that's technically what my cursor would be if I didn't think about it. But if I take it slower, it's thin on the up, thick on the down, then on the up. Oh, actually, so I noticed, so you, you can see that I decided to just go straight into that. I noticed my hand cramped a little bit. So what you can do is you can go one, lift up, two, stop, lift up. So that just releases your hand from cramping, lift up. And then so thick on the down, then on the up. So go through that and then um, try and write it on your own. The second one that we're gonna practice is chow. And this one, I want you to try a few different things on this one to experiment with. So another thing that if you're, this is your first time using it, you might be wondering, how do I grip this? I'm not really sure. You, I want you to grip how you normally grip a pencil because I want you to have control. But if you want to experiment and see, because everyone has a different grip and that's totally okay, is what you can experiment with is 
if you want to, let's see, if you naturally, some people sometimes write more straight up and down with my pen. Actually, I'm gonna grab another practice paper. So that, so you'll notice my brush, or my, paint, my it's not a paintbrush, my brush pen is pointing straight up in the air. And if it's on the side a little bit more, you can get a thicker stroke. So if you want a thicker one, that glides a little bit easier. If you just, I'm having the same grip, but I'm just rotating my hand very slightly, and that may help you get a thicker line. Because what's happening is that you're able to get more on the belly of the brush rather than here. You can only get that. You can see the tip is smushing that much, whereas here the tip is smushing that much. So experiment with that on this one. So I'm gonna come a little bit more angled. So then on the up thick on the down, then on the up. I feel my hand cramping, so I'm gonna lift up and keep going. So then you'll notice the A is not, well, again, when I say not, you can do it however you want, but this is how I suggest to try and train yourself to get the foundation strokes is, I'm gonna take in two steps. So I'm gonna do a C, lift up, and then I'm gonna do this first shape like that. And then the O. So then the last one that we're gonna go through is bonjour. And with this one, I want you to see that the connections, what's happening is that you are drawing each letter and extending it to the next one. So when I go thick on the down, lift up, go thin on the up, thick on the down. So for this one, I'm gonna continue it forward. With the B especially, I know that your natural instinct may be to go like that and start like right there, which that works, but you also can help yourself by creating this little loop, and so you're going to the beginning of the next letter here. So I'm coming up like that, like I did there. And then the other tip that I wanna to tell you show you is that if your letter has an O in it, I would add, I also, the reason why I like to add loops on my letters is rather than going like, well, I naturally do that. And rather than going like that and connecting it, by creating a loop, it's helping create this variance of it kind of guiding it to the next one rather than abruptly, sh not shoving. <laughs> telling the other letter to just attach to me. So it's kind of guiding it. So I you add a little loop like that, and then I come back around. Putting out a little helpful hand. Oh, a helpful, oh yeah, that's what we decided I was gonna say. A little helpful hand, so it's asking you to come join. Thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. Thin on the up, thick on the down, thin on the up. And then, let's see, I'm gonna show you again, if I were to, Oh, actually, I know what I wanted to show you is if you are left-handed, because I know obviously lefties exist out there, and I don't want you to feel like you can't do this because I've seen so many people, I've taught classes in person, I've seen people, I've even seen 12-year-olds left-handed do this, so you cannot use that as an excuse or a crutch. But I understand that there are different things that are a little bit different that you have to kind of it's not jumping through hurdles, but I understand it might be a little bit difficult at first. What I want you to experiment with is, is the angle of your paper. So I am right-handed and I tend to angle my paper a little bit here because when I'm drawing, it's easier to do that rather than super straight up and down. If you are left-handed, try doing the same thing but the opposite. So I know some, some left-handers are underwriters and some left-handers are overwriters. Either one totally works, but I would experiment with this. I'm gonna try and... I'm not left-handed. Oh, that worked pretty well. So I'm kind of, I guess, at a medium. I'm not one or the other. I'm kind of at a medium. Um, the other thing is I've seen lefties who are, have their paper like angled like that, and so they really, how do they? I think they come under. Well, actually, I don't really know. That feels okay. So this is how you are going to experiment. You are not going to do this right off the bat. Oh, that feels pretty good actually. So I want you to experiment with your angle of your paper. That's another thing you can play with. So for me, like I said, I angle and then 
thick on the down than on the up. I'm gonna finish this word out so you can see. So again, stroke one. And then this one, you can either choose to do it at one or two. I just did that in one and then like that. And then I like to cross my I's and dot my T's at the very end. Oh, like I didn't do that one. So this is for you to help practice and go through your own words. Um, as we, well, we're gonna get into the step three, which is the layout in pencil of your final project, which will look something similar to this. With this, what I want you to do is write down, maybe you ask your community how they say hello, or hey, or hey y'all, how they say it, um, or you ask your family what your heritage is or nationality, both. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> ask them and just find out and make a list of different ways to say hello. Um, really fun fact is that we have a Let's Make Art watercolor group, which is where this was all founded on. And I asked them and in that community, we found people were from all different, yeah. Irish and German and Bulgaria and Russia and all these different ones that we got. So I went and I found out how to say it or write it and that's why I have a whole bunch of different words here. Um, so do that, ask your community. This is a good way to just ask questions. And then, so what I, I did that already and I made my own list. And you can see this is just my scribbles and how I write. Oh, where's my other pencil? Um, here we go. Uh, okay, we also have a guide. So this is, if you have our box, like I said, it's in there. If you don't, you can download this and print this out. This is just a circle I already made, and I wanted to give you a jump start, and I wrote hello. And so when you're looking at this, you will notice I do not want you to focus on making things perfect or straight or the same size. I really want you to just go for this and have fun. And like I said, the whole point of this first project is just to get to know your brush pen. So you will see these are not on a straight line. I also added some in, I used, which I'll show you is that there's two different sides of this pen. So you can do that. You can use different colors. Um, I did some in a block font. So don't feel like you have to make it look one, exactly like mine, but two, that it has to look perfect because we're trying to just continue to grow. And that's how we're going to do it is by practicing. But I want to show you is give you a little inside scoop into how my brain I guess how my brain works and how I kind of decided where things go. And this is all trial and error, but I just want to show you. A little sneak peek into the Move cool down. brain. <laughs> um, so the first thing is I wrote hello. And then, so what I first thought was of what's on my list is my longest word. And it's actually konnichiwa, which is I'm Japanese. So I thought that was cool. And I was going to first, I remember I first tried it out and wrote it all here. But then my head went, that's actually a very, I wrote hello so big that that would just kind of take up a lot of it. So I decided, I just decided to just forget about that for now. And then I thought, what if I did three smaller or medium sized words that would fit here to kind of break it up? So I just went through my list and I picked a few. I did good day, ciao, and I guess I picked shalom. So those ones when i picked it i think so you can decide do you write the first one first and maybe you can do that oh i did my g differently oh well that's totally fine or you can erase so i am just kind of sketching these out if you want you can if you need to erase so i realize that shalom oh actually i forgot one step that i wanted to show you guys which once you have well, first I want to show you is <laughs> if you don't have this download that you can print out, that's totally okay because you can see I, you can just use a bowl and you can outline it. So I forgot to say that. You can do that. The second one thing that I wanted to mention was I want you to create when you have your outside outline is I want you to draw an outline in the inside and just follow along and keep it about, it doesn't need to be perfect either, about a similar width around. And this is because this is going to be your guide of where all your letters are going to extend to the edge. So 
you will see that on here, and you can decide what how big this is, but what it is is this space right here, this colored space, is actually my white space around. So our final step will be adding the sun rays around. So that's why you add that. And so the reason why is that I will extend my G to go all the way over there. And then Shalom is going to extend all the way. So I'm gonna do this a little bit quicker because I don't, again, I don't want you to focus so much on if you have band handwriting, I just want you to write it out because it will look different, I promise, once we go to the pen. So the next thing that I saw was that I saw this space right here. So I went back to my list and I saw that Bonjour has this J that extends. So I thought that would be cool to add right here. So I actually just did the J first and then I wrote it out like that. And then you can add it in like that on the other side. So that's one thing. And then how else did I think? Um, I noticed that there is this space right here. So I just decided to write, I wanted to mix it up and I wanted to write high really big, just to kind of have a big word. Um, so from there, you are just adding in words wherever you want. So when you're looking at this, the reason why, oh, I forgot to mention is that I created two different categories, or not categories, but lists. So I have this list, which ignore that, that's the, country. Um, that is my list of smaller words. And this is my list of a little bit longer words. And then I created one of ones that were the characters were different. And so I didn't want to mess that up. So I decided at the end to do them in my block print. So I wanted to be aware and not mess that up. So that's what those ones are. Um, so as you're doing this here, I remember thinking, okay, this is cool. This is a small and a big. So I just wrote it right here. Again, this is puzzling, so you'll notice that there's this space. I guess, oh, someone told me to write yo. 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 <laughs> That's probably how I would say hello. Yo. <laughs> um, so I wrote that there. You also then can notice little pockets, so that's why I added, which m this one doesn't have as much. So let me just erase this really quickly. Um, that's when I wrote in, which one did I do here? Oh. This one, that's Bulgarian. The one we can't say. Yes. But what can you say? You can say the one in Russia. Go for it, Keenan. Privet. Yes, so good. Privet. Okay, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and then another thing that I just want to show you is that. I saw that I had all this space on top, and so I decided to do Camusta, Camusta, which is Filipino. And but what I wanted to show you, S T A, is that so because I have this line right here, which is my extension, I decided it'd be cool if I started that and I did that with my whole T. I know I have a little bit of space there, but that's totally fine. But I thought it'd be cool to use that to my advantage. Um. So then once I'll fill that in later on, but I wanted to show you as I went through this one is you can now decide, do I want to do my long word or do I break it up? I just decided to do, hey y'all here. Do you know who suggested that one or where they were from? Hey y'all? Yeah. Everyone. Really? No, not everyone. Big one. It was a good one. There must, there are a lot of Southerners in that group. That's cool which is awesome. And I think I'm going to start saying, hey y'all, just naturally. Um, okay, then that's when I remember doing that and then I realized, okay, cool, maybe I will use this shape and write out konnichiwa on that whole one. So that's why. And again, I really don't want you to be so focused on your cursive or your lettering looking a certain way. I just want you to write it. So it's interesting. I realize that on this one, I have a lot of space here and I have this small space here. Whereas you notice on this one, it was kind of the opposite. So I'm going to decide to write Sveiki, which is Lithuanian. And then 
Hey, hey. I looked it up, that's how you say it, which is Finnish. But it looks like hej in Swedish, which I'll add that. Where did I add that? That's cool. Ooh, okay, so I'm gonna decide, I'm gonna mix it up. So I like this spot for that, but it's not hej, which is what it would look like. It's actually high. Hi. Hi? Yeah. That's like our hi. Yeah, I liked it. That's cool. Um, Where was the, oh, the Ola. BOK one from? Bok. Croatia. 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 That's cool. Which I love. Okay, what else am I missing? So I realize that I have this space here, and I haven't wrote namaste, so maybe I wrote, oh, I got to add Ola for, sh for sure, but I'm just going to... Namaste, because Ola is a small word, so that could even fit right here. So let's see. Oh, Keenan, say Polish. Polish? These. Oh, Jean Dobre. Yes, I was like, you know this one. Yeah, I've added it right there. Yeah, that's a great one. That's a great one. Uh, hey, y'all. Did I get them all? No. Salute. So this is where I just, okay, I'm gonna mm, just kind of puzzle piece things together. Oi. Oi. <laughs> oh, it fits nicely right there. Did I get them all, Keenan? Ahoy. Okay, well, I'm going to, I guess, should I keep going? I think, I mean, there's a couple more spaces you got. Okay. Actually, thank you for mentioning that. Because when we continue learning, you're going to hear me say this, and I'm going to tell you to take a step back and look at what you're working with because you get so tunnel vision, and this happens in life where we get so tunnel vision on things. So I love that Keenan said that because if I take a step back, I do see spots. There's a spot here. There's a spot here and right here. So a trick that you can do is you can squint your eyes and you can kind of see where the holes are. Or when you're looking at it, I just like to kind of come up on top of it or I hold it up to my face and see. So you're totally right, Keenan, that I'm missing a few, which I'm trying to think which words I'm missing though. Hey, did I write hey? No, what we would say. Oh, howdy, howdy. Howdy. Did I do a hoy? Yes, you did. Where? Uh, oh, yeah, right there. Yeah. Uh oh, did I run out of words? Oh, Greek! <laughs> yes, yes, us. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Please, no one make fun of me. I'm trying. Yes, us. Um, <laughs> I'm going to add that. So when I look at this, where, oh, I have this space, which I switched it up, but I'll write it right here. It's this, it's not cool characters. Okay. I realize there's space right here. What's one more? Hey, yo, hi, howdy, yo. Um, mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to write hi again <laughs> to fit it in because I know that there is a space there. Perfect. Okay, so <laughs> that is the puzzle piecing. You can do this on your own. You will have your own list, but that's how you're going to kind of do is puzzle piece it. And the beautiful thing is that you're doing this in pencil, so you can erase. It doesn't have to look perfect. We're kind of brainstorming and figuring it out as you go, and that's the beauty of it. Once you have that all figured out, there are a few different things that you can do. So one, if you want to practice and get accustomed to your thin on the up, thick on the down, what I suggest is that you can do is you can use this as your practice. So maybe you go over it and you say to yourself, okay, thick on the down. The K is a little bit different. You can choose to make it thick or thin because it's three kind of down. So you can decide, I kind of do thick and then medium and then medium. So thick on the down, thin on the up. So you can practice and go over 
your words just to start to get accustomed to it a little bit more. Or what you can do is, so I the end game is to draw it on your final piece of paper, which is Bristol paper, which is a little bit thicker. So unfortunately, this isn't this paper isn't see through. So a few things that you can do, because the reason why is this is our template that we created is I have a light box and I will be tracing over it. So I can see hello because it's really dark and I actually can, can see Kamusta because I wrote it in the brush pen. If you can't see it, I know it's different in here because we have a lot of lights on me, um, is you can go over it. If you don't want to do it in your brush pen, you can go over it with a Sharpie or any dark marker and you can get it like that. Or, well, do this step. I'm going to do it and then we'll come back. But I want to show you is a couple life hacks. If you don't have a, am I gonna get this? If you don't have a, a light box, what you can do. Yes. Nailed it, first try. Nailed it. Sore subject, I haven't been able to do that. If you have a cooking dish, it doesn't need to be circle, it's actually better if it's more of a rectangle. But if you have a glass baking dish, place it upside down so it's facing down. Put your, sorry, that's probably bright for people. <laughs> um, put your flashlight underneath, or your phone on flashlight mode underneath, have it shining up, and you can place this on top, and then place your paper on top of that so you can see it might be really slight but I can see hello so I can still see through so that's a hack or another one is using a window if you're comfortable with you just be writing unless no you don't have a window on the ground you would just be writing standing up but you would do the same thing as put your template and then put your final one on there I hope they have windows well I was yes I hope you have windows you can do it there's three different ways, so I promise you, you can do it. Or actually the other way is graphite paper, which Sarah in the watercolor box goes through that a lot. But graphite paper is one that if you put that underneath, you can do that and you can get the pencil lines on here. The only thing and why I didn't do, which I'm glad I mentioned, is why I didn't do this step on my final Bristol paper is that these pit pens are transparent. So you will see the um, pencil line below. If you do it really faint, you can do it. And it's, if you don't care, then I don't care. <laughs> so you can totally do that. But that's the, I guess the fourth way of doing it. So Keenan can fast forward while I'm going to write all this to make it darker for me. And go. And go. Okay, we are back and I did it all in Sharpie. Now I'm going to do the final step on with my brush, so step four. So if you want, you can tape this down. Um, I am using blue painter's tape. You can also use washi tape. It's just something that's a little bit more gentle on your final paper so that doesn't rip it off. Uh, okay. When you're going to do this, you can choose if you want to either do, you can jump around and maybe you choose, I'm just gonna start with this pen and do all the different colors and kind of skip around or you can decide to do yellow and then orange and then pink, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, you can do. Um, what I did was I decided to mix it up. So I realized on here I did all pink, so maybe next time I would mix it up, but I'm not mad about it at all. I really actually like that. So I'm going to just draw a few so you can see. Again, thick on the down, thin on the up. 
So the beautiful thing is that we are just tracing. So you can take it slow and just trace over each one and talk to yourself and say thin on the up, thick on the down. So I'm gonna do that and then add pink. So again, you can either choose to do all orange and just skip around or you can do a different color each time. So when you're doing this, another thing that I wanted to show you is Pause for a second. When you have a smaller word, like I have the, ah, I don't know how to say that. Which one is that? Dia, oh, that's Irish. We can't say that. Ah, I tried. It's very, it's very, very, it's in the throat. It's, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna write it, it's Irish. So what I was gonna say is that you can decide I love how that's the one I got, <laughs> um, is you can decide how much pressure you wanted to choose. So this is a good way to practice, actually. So maybe I applied a really thick pressure, so that's how I got these thick lines. But on this one, I think I'm going to apply medium pressure because it's a smaller word. I don't want to make it so squished so that it's hard to even read it. So I'm still going to think about thin on the up and thick on the down, but I'm going to apply medium pressure on my down instead of very heavy. So I'm gonna apply medium pressure, but still get a thick down. Then I'm gonna really lightly graze to get a thin stroke. So again, medium pressure, thick on the down, thin on the up. And the other thing is that, I said this when we started, is because you have so many words that you're doing with, do not focus so much on getting it exactly right. So if you feel like you made a mistake, Keep, please keep going, do not stop, because at the end, no one will ever know, except for you. So I want you to kind of allow yourself to just go for it and practice, and think of this as you're getting practice learning. Oops, that was, I felt my hand cramp, so I'm gonna lift up, and then go back over. Oh, this has an accent forgot to add that. And then the other thing that I just wanted to show is if you're using the other side. So like I mentioned, this is a dual brush pen. So there's two different sides. So this is the brush pen side. And then this is just the pointed, I, they're both felt tip, but it's just a smaller tip. So I'm gonna do, oh, the one in Greek. Make sure I do this right. So I am, there is no way I'm gonna focus so I don't mess up. Can't multitask. Focus up. Okay. <laughs> so you're not gonna get a thin and thick at this one. For right now, what we're learning is you're not gonna do that. Um, this is just gonna be in one thickness, but oh, I'm gonna switch it up. You can also do it, so it's fun that you can do it in print. Or there's one, where's another one? If you want, maybe you still do it in, let's say, Namaste. So even though I wrote Namaste in my block font, I can still use my brush pen and still think about thin on the up, thick on the down, even though it's a block font. So it doesn't have to be in a script, except this word is very squished. So it might have been better if I did it with my thinner side, but this totally works. Do you know a fun fact about Namaste? Yes, please hit us with it. So I met somebody on my deployment last year uh -huh. that I said, uh, th they told me that I could say Namaste, but they told me that it meant also respect. Oh. Yes. And I, th I don't know I could 100% the reason behind it, but she alluded to the fact that you would say Namaste in, in respect of the person that you're saying it to. I love that. Yeah. We say at the end of yoga, so, which has different meanings, but thanks for the fun fact, Keenan. You're welcome. So keep going. I'm going to, we can fast forward through. I can write a few more words. I really want to go to Australia. Same. Good day. Um, Down under. <laughs> 
we can fast forward through the rest of me writing. Um, but keep going, Add, keep adding your words, have fun, mix it up. The reason why I'm using three colors is that they all don't have to look the same. And then take your time and keep going. with Nicole. <laughs> Gotta clear his throat to say that. <laughs> okay, so I went through the whole thing and I drew all my words in all my different colors. Now we're gonna do the final step, which is adding the sun rays around. So you have your outside outline that um, is what we're gonna use as our guide for drawing the sun rays. So on this, actually, Turn this off for a second. What I want you to do is I want you to, I challenge, I challenge you. Challenge accepted. <laughs> um, in a very kind way, I challenge you to see how thin of a line you can get on these. So a common thing that trips people up is when they're doing this, they feel like I can't get my line thin enough. So I created this as a practice for you to do it, but also to finish off your piece. So when you're doing this, you're gonna draw lines up or actually it doesn't matter what direction, I tend to just draw them up and out, but I'm going to lightly draw my line. So you will see I am just using the tip and you can really lightly, you might skip a few times. Actually, I'm just gonna go for it and then you can watch. So I'm going to look at the outside line so it'll they'll have a little bit of white space in between and Oh, also what I want, actually I'm gonna show you is add, leave a little bit of space in between. It doesn't need to be a lot, but leave a little bit of space in between if you want. And you can keep them about a similar distance. So it's easier for me as I get there to rot. Oh, bummer. Well, that might happen to you. <laughs> and how you fix it is rolling with the punches. That was not smart of me. Well, does that work? Okay, it's all good. So what I was trying to say was that I rotate because it's easier for me to draw at the same direction going all the way around. So again, I'm just lightly grazing, drawing on the outside line so that I have a little bit of negative space in between. Keep going. And when you're doing this also, is you can choose to either have a line and then stop, or sometimes I kind of let it trail off. So it has this small point at the top. That's personal preference. You totally do not have to do that, but I just wanna show you what's, oh. Oh, the other trick that you can do is if you if you're if you're worried about it smearing or if your hands get a little clammy, which is totally okay because that happens to me, use another piece of paper. Gosh. Okay. There we go. Is use a piece of paper underneath as your guard. That was a very sensitive light button. I know. I think I just lightly grazed it like I'm doing with <laughs> this. It's okay. It's all good. So go all the way around. And then, so when you look at this, you can see there's a little bit of space in between. So by doing that, and also it's kind of cool. They look a little bit different. I realized that my negative space was a lot bigger on this one than it is on this one, which is cool to see a variance. So what I want you to do after you do that first round is on the second round, go in between and draw them just a little bit taller. So this, it's a little just trick so that, because when you're doing it all at once, you might 
be thinking about too many things. So if you tell yourself to keep it about the same distance, but do two different rounds and vary it up there, it will be less things to think about, but still create this look. So again, I'm lightly grazing. Oh, the other thing is on these ones, because there's such a small line, I am keeping my hand stationary and drawing rather than going like this, but that might work for some people. Um, especially if you're used to painting with watercolors, you might naturally kind of move your arm rather than keep your hand stationary. I tend to keep my hand stationary and just move my, hello cord. <laughs> Oi. Oh, actually, we're all good. I don't need that anymore because I have my line. So I'm just drawing it all the way around and then, woohoo! Now we're done. So lightly pull, very gently pull off your paint. Paint tape, painter's tape. I paused. Oh, yeah, paint. <laughs> it's not paint. Painter's tape. And then you are all done. So this was so much fun i hope you enjoy doing it as well we have a couple ways that you can connect with us we have an instagram that's let's go make art and then we have a facebook group now that's called let's go make art lettering and i would love to see what you made maybe teach me a few different words of how to say hello in a few different languages and just share your work i know it might seem intimidating and it might, you might not feel ready to share, but I really want you to just put yourself out there and we all are in this, we're learning together. That's the whole point of this group is it's just to keep growing and learning and sharing. And also, if you don't have the supplies, like I said in the beginning, we have a box, you can get go with that or use whatever you have. I'll be here paint, er, painting, lettering weekly and we will continue learning forward. Thank you everyone.